Hello, this is Todd from Hot Packs. I wanted to bring you into the battery shop today and talk to you a little bit about how I build lithium ion battery packs. This particular pack is a 60 amp continuous discharge pack. It's a 72 volt, a 20 amp hour. Uh, there's uh, 20 cells in series, five in parallel, 100 cells per pack. And uh, I'm gonna start by talking about bus bars. So here we have a copper, uh, copper nickel plated steel hybrid bus bar. And uh, w when you're flowing high current rates, uh, like, like in this case, 60 amps, uh, a nickel plated steel isn't gonna work. So the, the resistance of that uh, particular material is gonna be high enough that it's gonna get hot. And, and you don't want your uh, bus bars getting hot. Um, it adds heat to the cell and, and can cause damage. Um, so one thing I tried initially was a pure nickel uh, bus bar, you, you can use those. Um, they have their advantages. You know, the pure nickel strip I could cut into different configurations if I wanted to do a 6P pack or a 5P pack or s something else. Um, the, the problem was welding it is difficult. And um, actually with the, with the Sunco unit here, I couldn't do it. Uh, it was rated to be able to weld pure nickel, but I, I, I couldn't get it to do it. I worked with Sunco, still couldn't uh, weld the pure nickel and um, after connecting the weld pen let me slow down so I, I could weld pure nickel with the fixed mounted uh, welding contacts but with the weld pen I could not and then I attached the weld pen directly to the transformer plenty of videos on that uh, on YouTube uh, and I was able to weld it but uh, the, the weld pen would stick to the nickel and it was it was difficult the other thing um, that's important is the, the positive side of the cell in the very center, you've got your positive contact, but on the, on the side of the cell, also on, on the front side, but towards the side is uh, negatively charged uh, cell casing. And so it's important that you use a, a ring insulator uh, between your bus bar and the positive side of the, the cell. Um, with these particular bus bars, uh, they reach down uh, in a targeted area to where they will make contact with the positive um, terminal on the battery without uh, coming in contact uh, with the casing. So you, you can avoid, if you're careful about the placement of your bus bars, you do not need insulation rings, which is another benefit. I don't uh, work for Wellgo or you don't get any proceeds, but th this is where uh, the bus bars came from. They are Wellgo bus bars available on Alibaba. These ones are uh, half millimeter thickness. Uh, they weld real nice, capable of 150 amps. So that saved me a lot of time. The bus bars are more expensive than the pure nickel, um, but the uh, the holders, Wellgo also sells. So for a, um, a parallel grouping of five, uh, a holder was like eight cents. So that helped bring the cost down. Shipping is, is a challenge. So when I bought these, I bought 25 packs worth. So shipping wasn't wasn't a huge hit, but if you're building one pack, then, then that does uh, add to the expense. Um, this is a JBD BMS right here. Uh, I think it's a good BMS. It's, it's got a good price point, uh, has internal Bluetooth communication. Um, you can connect up to 22 cells in the series, hundred amp capacity programmable, um, two thermal couples. All right, so what we've done here, I have a uh, one millimeter fiber board protecting between the sub packs for insulation so that the bus bars don't short out. Um, in addition to that, there's a piece of fish paper on each side of the fiber board. And then between the fish paper and the very center, that's where the two thermal couples or um, temperature probes are located. So those are those go reach down uh, about midway in the pack and that's where the peak temperature of the pack is. And there, there's two of them. This plugs into the BMS as well. So we're, we're trying to do what we can to protect against shorts. Uh, these actually are not charge leads. These are balance leads. So the, the charging of the cells happens same as discharging in series through the main uh, through the main positive and negative bus bars, uh, these balance leads burn power to maintain the voltage in the subgroup and keep them the same.
the cells themselves, um, you do not have to use an expensive name brand cell. If, if you don't use an expensive name brand cell, you should do your, your homework and make sure that the cell is quality. And, and in this case, what I've done is, uh, well, a couple things. So the, the internal resistance of the cell is important. This is a nice unit here, I recommend this. Um, so the cells are oftentimes rated at uh, 10 kilohertz AC internal resistance. And if, if you're above 15 milliohms, then what'll happen at this level of current flow, um, which is about 12 amps per cell, is that the, the cell will heat up. And as you use it uh, at continuous peak uh, current, the, the temperature of the cell will reach its temperature limit, which is about 75 C before you fully exhaust the capacity of the cell. So basically your pack will overheat. Um, and that's if you have your, your temperature sensor set up properly and, and your BMS set up properly. Otherwise you'll overheat the pack. Uh, these, these wires, the balance leads, the insulation on those is rated at 80 Celsius. So if you get your cells over 80 C and you're not insulated uh, with something more like the fish paper, uh, you'll melt through the insulation of the wire and you could short out. So shorts are bad. So over here we have uh, cycle testing of cells. Here's the cell, here's the cycle tester. I'm at uh, a thousand cycles. I hit it, it's taken some months. I hit it last night. So DCC is my constant current discharge. So we've been uh, charging the cells at um, two amps, draining them at 12 amps with a 30, 30 minute uh, wait after discharge before charging. We've done that a thousand times. I'm at 3.422 amp hours. So 3.2 amp hours would be 80%, which is often how they're rated. So I'm over a thousand cycles. And I haven't hit, um, still above 80% capacity. Uh, bus bars. So for the uh, main takeout, positive and negative, oftentimes people will uh, strip a lot of insulation off their wire and run the wire the length of the bus bar. And the reason for that is to protect the bus bar from getting hot so the current can pull straight out the, the long cross section of the bus bar. If the bus uh, bar were connected only at the top without the extra uh, copper here, then um, all the current has to flow through a shorter cross section and potentially heats up the bus bar. Uh, what I found is that rather than trying to manage the stranded wire without insulation, it's easier for me to take solid conductor and just solder extra copper onto the bus bar. That's actually residential 12 gauge solid conductor wire, copper's copper. Um, what else can we talk about here? So if you're gonna build packs, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to test the pack and discharge it and do it on the bench. Uh, an inexpensive way to do that, nichrome wire. So this is available, this wire came from Amazon, $25. Um, arrayed in, in the right way. So here I have uh, three, three independent sections of wire. Uh, I can't remember what gauge nichrome this is, but I did the math on it and um, it's an inexpensive way to discharge batteries. Run through a nice switch and you can pull your packs down. It's a, it's a constant resistance system. It's not even really that because the resistance of the nichrome wire changes as it heats up, but it doesn't change a lot. So it's, it's pretty close to a, a constant current discharge. Uh, goes down some as the, the voltage of the pack decreases. But if you're looking for an inexpensive way to discharge your pack, that's the best way I found. Lithium-ion battery pack building. Hotpacks.com.
Thanks for watching.